guys, what is up? Now, sorry for not uploading for so long. Um, there's been a lot of stuff going down, and uh, I'm waiting on a couple of deliveries so I can make a few more videos. But uh, I'm coming at you <laughs> with a uh, with a tutorial on ripping Blu-rays um, on a Mac. And I've actually got Hackintosh, and I'm only saying that because my Blu-ray drive is internal, uh, and I've got uh, out of my old laptop from years ago. I actually have a two times Blu-ray drive that I I didn't even know I had, so I took that. Um, bought a small adapter, slimline SATA, um, or SATA, whatever you want to call it, to, uh, to full size SATA power and data, and uh, plug that in, and it works perfectly with Macintosh. Uh, but for a normal Mac, or a proper Mac, or whatever you want to call it, you're going to have to get a um, an external one uh, for the most part, depending on whichever machine you've got. Um, so, starting off, there's one thing you're going to have to download, and it's a program called Make MKV. Now, for 30 days, it's completely free, and I don't know whether the uh, the glitch of um, uninstalling it with um, what is it called, Clean My Mac, works. When you uninstall it with Clean My Mac, it deletes every single file at all that's on your computer to do with uh, said application, and then when you install it again, it thinks it's a completely different system. So maybe that works. I haven't really tried it yet. I've got one day left, so I thought I'd better make it now. But go to this website, download uh, .mkv for Mac. I think go on download. Yeah, for Mac. Same thing on Windows, 30 day trial I think. I'm actually, um, as you can see here, doing a um, doing an encode of one of the uh, mo movies I ripped. So I'm going to open up make uh, MKV here and I'm just going to eject when it when it lets me. So there you go, you can probably hear my computer in the background and that's just my um, uh, optical drive kind of spinning up there. So I've actually got Avatar already in there so I'm going to take that out because it would be a waste of time for, for me uh, for the most part. <laughs> To redo uh, Avatar. Now the the quality that it comes out with with is basically full quality. It comes out full 1080p for 30 days. There's literally no watermarks, no um, no hidden metadata or anything like that. Basically, just put it in. It rips the file to an MKV file on your computer, and boom. And then after that, you can choose to buy or, or donate to the uh, to the people who make this glorious software, which I will be doing uh, after this video. Maybe I'll do it in the video. I don't really know. So once I've loaded in the uh, the Blu-ray disc and it's it's noticed that I've uh, actually uh, put it in. Um, it's going to start reading it, try and work out and um, see what's actually on the uh, on the disc. Work out how to read it. As you can see there, it's worked out that the the amount of data on the drive is 37.84 gigs. So we're now going to click this button here, which is going to find the individual files on the disc and find out which ones are the ones that need to come off. So the reason. Um, this is, I think, what the reason why. The reason that um, Max cannot read um, Blu-ray drives is because of, or Blu-ray discs, sorry, uh, usually, uh, with QuickTime, is because of the format that they are written with. I think it's M2TS, I think. I'm not 100% on that. Don't quote me on it or anything. But basically, uh, QuickTime doesn't really support that um, sort of... There it is there, .M2TS. QuickTime doesn't support that... Um, that format so basically it doesn't allow you but with make uh, make mkv uh, you actually you know use this program to work out the um the files on the disc and it will rip it for you so we're just going to uncheck all of these here you're going to be looking for the one with the highest capacity so as you can see here we have 4.8 gigs that is not it clearly of a blu-ray disc so i'm going to uncheck that uncheck all of these ones which are under any kind of massive file and here we go 29 chapters 27.6 gigabytes two and a half hours long now this is Harry Potter, oh shit, sorry about that, Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, so we're just going to click here, make MKV, as you can see it's going to save to Josh Movies HP4, so we're going to click that here, click yes, and it's going to go at it, and try and uh, rip it off the computer, it's never failed for me, I don't think it can fail, as you can see it's making it into a .mkv, after that you're going to want to open up Handbrake, uh, and actually uh, encode it into a .m4v file so you can um, so you can actually add it into iTunes. You're going to use MetaX as well to get all the metadata so it actually looks like you bought it um, because you basically did. And my view on this, there may be many people that say you shouldn't do this, but still, I think if you, I bought the uh, the box set of Harry Potter here. You can hear it in my hand. Uh, I bought the box set of Harry Potter. I don't see why I'm going to have to keep using these discs that are going to scratch and eventually break when I could just rip it uh, with my Mac onto uh, iTunes. So I'm going to actually leave you here. It takes quite a long time depending um, on the 
the speed of your drive and the file size. So as you can see, mine's going to take around 50 minutes. It's actually decreasing very quickly. Or 30 minutes. I don't know which one it is. It's one of those times. So it's going to take a little while. Um, and whilst you're doing this, it's actually not taking that much processing power at all. But it's just using your hard drives, like, you know, full blast. So if you do have an SSD, it might be quite a bit quicker. Uh, I don't really know that. Um, for sure, but it's basically just using your hard drive, not really a processor. So I'll come back when it's finished. Okay, so there we are. Uh, the um, the rip has finished. Now, for the purpose of this video and making it easier for me, um, I'm actually going to use a different uh, movie after this. But what we're going to do now is click on Source here. Uh, go to the you know the place where it was selected. Uh, as you can see, Harry Potter Four here, and there's the title there. So we're actually just going to check it first. So if we go there, go to Movies, Harry Potter Four, and open this with VLC. Just to make sure that the movies there it didn't corrupt or anything, we'll just skip forward a bit. As you can see there, I don't know why it's it's gone. Oh yeah, okay, just just the uh, the aspect ratio the movie's filmed in. Um, but as you can see here, going through, it's full lossless quality. I'm not going to play too much at one time because I don't want to um, get copyrighted. But there you go. You know, you can see the movie. It's in full 1080p quality. Um, if I actually look at the dimensions, uh, I don't know if it's going to tell me. Nope. Okay, well, be like that. It's 28 gigs anyway, so you can see it's 28 gigs. It's going to take quite a, uh, quite a long time um, to render, depending on your CPU. So we're going to open it up in Handbrake, uh, which is my selected and like re-encoding choice. Um, source is 1920 by 1080, but the output is going to be whatever the actual uh, video is. Now, if you have the big dense black bars like we just saw there, which is like 23 by 5 by 1, I think I can't really remember the aspect ratio. But if it's like that, then the um, uh, handbrake will actually encode it so it's always like that so it's actually full black so I'm gonna go to sound just gonna up the uh, bitrate and the constant quality I always put it to about 10 because if you put it this end 51 is low lowers F quality and zero is full quality so I just I just rendered uh, American Pie 2 in full quality so I'm gonna do this one in uh, RF 10 I actually did that by accident there start and there we go it's gonna start re-encoding so Whilst it's that done, we can close MKV beta now, or make MKV, or whatever you want to call it. So just close that there. We're now going to go back to movies. Um, Blu-ray rip. Oh no, there it is, back there. Uh, here we have American Pie.m4v. Now this is actually messed up a little bit. Um, and this sometimes does happen, and that's the annoying thing uh, about... Um, about this, uh, this kind of method, is that sometimes it can corrupt. So, here I've got my... Uh, uh, album that's just uh, loaded in here. Here are my movies. These are all ones that I've ripped. Um, and as you can see, they all look like real movies apart from the Matrix Reloaded. I haven't done that one yet. Uh, but they all look like movies that I've bought off iTunes because of the metadata. So, what you're going to want to do uh, for that one uh, is use MetaX, and it is here. Uh, this little cow. It's free download. You can use it whenever you want for total free. You just drag a file in. Type in a name, it'll search it up on, say, Amazon. So if we typed in, um, when it loads up, oh, now we're going to have to open a file. Brilliant. Um, so let's go movies. Select American Pie 2. Select it as a movie because it wants to search Amazon for movies. Uh, type in American Pie 2. And what this is going to do is going to search um, movie websites and uh, selling websites or whatever you want to say that sells these kind of DVDs and it's going to find it, find all the metadata, select toggle and write and it will just, um, it will write it as if it was like a full film like this. So another one that I've done, uh, if I can find it here, is John English Reborn. So um, we're going to click on this here and I'll show you what it comes out like. So it comes out in full quality, I'm not going to play too much of this, uh, but depending on how far you want the quality scale to go on handbrake, and this is lag because I'm handbrake uh, encoding at the moment, but that's not actually in the movie. Yeah. Going across here, look, full quality. It's, as you, like I, I said, the frame rate drop there is mainly because I'm doing a handbrake rip um, for the other other movie. But aside from that, it comes out in full quality um, off your Blu-ray. Even if it didn't, even if it came out worse of quality, it's still a Blu-ray rip for your Mac, so that's basically what this video was for. I hope you enjoyed it. Sorry that it was very long uh, checking. Uh, I've been recording the whole time. It's a whole hour, so it'll probably be about 10 minutes long. So I hope you enjoyed the video. It took about 26 minutes, 28 minutes uh, to encode, um, to, to rip, I mean, from a Blu-ray with a four times uh, Blu-ray reader. Um, and it took um, about 
40 minutes to re-encode it on handbrakes. So altogether, that's about one and one one and uh, about 70 minutes, 80 minutes max um, to, to, to do one movie. And this is something you could do if you have a really high spec computer in the background. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, if it helps you out in any way, uh, please give it a like. Please donate to the developers who will buy the application. Don't try and, uh, you know, cheat your way. You know, with like loads of 30 day trials, uh, please support the developers, please support the channel as well, subscribe as well for uh, any future videos on any kind of technology, uh, and I'll hopefully see you in the next one.